Hey guys, Flutter 1.2, here it comes. So a few months back, I don't know how many months ago it was, could have been two months, could have been four months, I'm not sure. I did a video, I'm going to link it below, and I said, Swift is going down! And it got over 100,000 views, and a lot of Swift people uh, were not happy about what I was talking about in the video. In a nutshell, I mentioned how I felt that frameworks like Flutter, React, and others was going to put more and more pressure on native development, whether it be with Swift for iOS or Kotlin, Java for Android. I said that native development was going to lose market share over time because the frameworks were just getting better and better and better. Frameworks like React Native or Flutter, etc. And uh, yeah, so frameworks were just getting better. Smartphones were getting faster. So the difference in performance between native apps and non-native solutions was diminishing, not to mention just responsive websites. For my SaaS software, Studio Web, it's fully responsive, and uh, because it's just videos and answering questions and so forth, there was no need to write a native app for that. And there's a whole bunch of other solutions as well. People are going to be asking me in the comments, what about this, what about that? Anyway, this is about Flutter because I specifically saw something interesting in Flutter because Flutter allows you to write cross-platform mobile applications, iOS and Android, using one language, Dart, one framework, the Flutter framework. It's created by Google. And uh, what's interesting about Flutter, it compiles down to native. So you don't have a performance hit. So typically these type of frameworks have their uh, pros and their cons. The cons are you don't have access to certain things that you might have access to with native in terms of uh, hardware. As far as I understand with Flutter, you have access to everything. Apparently, you have amazing flexibility. Their major concern, well, the Flutter nerds' major concern, was to make the Flutter framework look really good, to give developers the ability to customize the looks, the look of their apps, uh, easily with the Flutter framework. That's something I hit on, on on many, many videos, the difference between successful apps and not so successful apps these days. A lot of the times, besides the, you know, just the basic, the basics of what the app does for you, is the UI. The UI has to be really good looking and has to be responsive. It has to be uh, easy to understand. So having good control over the look and feel of your UX in your UI is very important. And apparently the Flutter people agree with that. And so they've uh, put a lot of work into that. So they went from the beta, and I was talking about Flutter, I think it was still beta, and now it's at 1.2. Sort of quickly evolving the Flutter framework and uh, adding to it and responding to what people want in the framework. So that's a very good sign. Now. When I looked at the Flutter architecture, just superficially, but I looked at that Google for their core app, their AdWords app, is, yeah, the AdWords app, that's their bread and butter. Google still makes most of their money with their, their ads, right? And they wrote their core app in Flutter. So that shows you that Google had a lot of confidence in the performance of and the uh, stability of the Flutter-based mobile apps since their core business was uh, their core app for their core business is written in Flutter. So I wouldn't be doing that unless I knew it was good. So they knew it was good. So it's not just Google. Uh, just in a short period of time since I wrote that video, I've heard about more and more big players like Square, Alibaba, and several others are now using Flutter for their own mobile development. Now, those these, you know, Groupon, another one. These are huge companies with huge amount of users, many more users than your mobile apps will likely get, unless you're, you're one of the unicorns out there. And it works very well for them. So why are they using Flutter? Because they get to write one code base, to maintain one code base, and they get all the advantages or many advantages of native because it actually compiles down to native. Nothing is perfect. No framework is perfect. No language is perfect. But this is looking really, really good because apparently not only can you develop very fast, responsive mobile applications with Flutter where you have a lot of control over the UX and UI, but you also have uh, a, frame, a framework that allows you to do this very, very quickly. I think it, I'm going to link to um, 
a conference that Flutter put on, and there's they put out a video, and I just watched this video and read a little bit about Flutter, uh, what was going on now since the 1.2 release. And they had one developer saying they had developed a whole thing and just in the... It was just two developers just in like a, a month or two. They developed something from scratch, and they were learning Flutter. And this is for a pretty big company with millions of users. So uh, anyway, I'll link to the video below so you can take a look. And uh, there you have it. So my prediction of uh, a few months back, it looks like it's coming to pass even quicker than I had in anticipated. Here's a general rule, rule that I learned from the 1990s when I watched the development of the web space, the web application. Back in those days, web apps were very primitive compared to today because the, the technology underlying the web was still evolving quite quickly and needed a lot of work. Nonetheless, what I saw, I saw how web apps quickly came to dominate the application development space because it allowed for cross-platform development with one code base. And uh, so in the early 90s, for instance, most, uh, most apps on Windows was done with VB, VB6, and that was huge. That was so big. That was so big. But nowadays, people are building web apps most of the time for every thick client so it's a thick client whether it be on windows or mac for every thick client that is developed there's probably thousands and thousands of web apps developed and that's because again one code base one technology stack well for the most part uh, and you got a craft cross platform functional application whereas if you write something native for windows yes it's going to be faster it's going to have, you're going to have certain more flexibilities in terms of what you can do, but all of a sudden you're just limited to Windows. You've got to install it on Windows, blah, blah, blah. The web, you don't have to do that. Anyway, cross-platform, right once, more flexible technologies will beat out faster native when you have those types of advantages. So it's not exactly an apples-to-apples -apples comparison when you compare the web stack versus uh, non-native solutions like a Flutter. But nonetheless, I hope you understand the principle behind it. Now, I don't know how that's going to impact other uh, non-native solutions like React Native and, and others. I don't know. But uh, again, it's looking very promising. I think that Flutter is going to be here to stay. And the cool thing about Flutter is that it uses a language called Dart, which is uh, a Google language, as far as I remember. And it's very, very reminiscent of JavaScript. So if you learn JavaScript, to be able to jump into Dart will be pretty simple. And that's pretty much it. This is a little bit of nerd news. That's one of the things I intend to do more and more of coming this spring. And uh, yeah, I'm just getting stuff done in the back office. Basically, we're just trying to get the uh, the final pieces of Studio Web 4, the, the, the one old version, out, out and running. And we have a couple of satellite projects that's based on the Studio Web 4 platform. Once that's all in place, then we roll out, and then you're going to see a lot more content coming out on a regular basis. All right, that's it for now. Talk to you soon.